Welcome to Heidi Relationships. Today, we'll read some more stories from Reddit. But before we start, I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it, and maybe leave a comment down below. That would help the channel a lot. Thank you very much in advance. The first one is titled, I Ada for changing the locks on my cheating wife and going on holiday? My soon-to-be ex wife and I have been in a relationship for seven years. We are two well-off people career-wise. My wife has a leader position in marketing, lots of social events at clubs, well-paid job. I am living my dream as a firefighter. However, I have had a crapload of inheritance, so even though she is making seven figures a year we are equals money-wise. We have been unable to get kids. Though at first, but after a while we got used to the idea of living a double income no kids relationship, and we are focusing on work and each other, every three months enjoying at least two weeks or more of exotic holidays. Anyway, to the point. Last couple of weeks my wife has started receiving texts at night. I am a fast sleeper, and normally my wife will use her phone in bed. She will also fart in bed, when she thinks I am asleep. I find this funny, so I am pretending to be sleeping and never mention. However, last two weeks increasing frequency of texting, seemingly going on for hours. At first I slept through, but after some days I kept on feeling the vibrations of her phone and started wondering. One night I asked her early on who she is texting with. She just answered, work stuff honey, and smiled. I fell asleep, or so she thought, and she kept texting while giggling excitedly for hours. One of the last days I couldn't help me. In a moment of weakness I took her phone while she was out of the room and snooped. I am a pretty crap tea guy doing this, I know. It's just that this was something entirely new. She had the same job the last four years, and she never act like this for work. Look and behold, some guy she is texting with is sending pretty graphic pictures of a prick way bigger than mine. Worse, my wife is sending extremely graphic texts and pictures back. I didn't know what to do, feeling the need to puke and all crap falling apart around me. I did what I do best, pretended to sleep when my wife got back, and lied awake all night, listening to her texting. Next morning I fake sleeping as she goes into work, she starts crap early and I was I the start of a two week of period. I don't know what to do. I feel hatred and bitterness and sadness, but I am not up for a confrontation, this was four days ago. So, seeing I was on a leave period from work, I go on and order plane tickets to Naples in Italy. Before I go I call a locksmith to change the locks. This is my apartment, bought for some of the craploads of inheritance money described initially, and I can do what I want. My wife still has all her clothes and some important work stuff in the AP. I hurry out, even taking a flight with a stopover in Canada to be able to get the duck out faster, and before she gets back from work. Now I'm in Italy, getting a lot of angry texts from wife and her side of the family. I responded one text with something along the lines of, have fun with Mr. Big Prick, duck off. Before I turned off my phone she wrote that we need to talk and sort things out. I am the butthole for isolating myself on another continent for two weeks. I just want to drink a lot of red wine, eat pizza and escape reality. Do I have to answer? I mean I want, but am I in butthole for escaping my problems this way? Thank you for all advice. Edit update. Thank you for all advice and input guys, I really appreciate it all. I agree with what many of you are saying, she is also a tenant, and it was a ducking stupid move on my part to lock her out like that. I was, and still am, pissed and wasn't very rational in my acts and thinking. It didn't occur to me at the time that this could come back and bite me. I have gone through hellish logistics to get the door opened and she will go to the apartment to clean out her stuff today, before the door is locked again. Just to clarify, this is my place, I covered all expenses seeing the air small, bought the place and it's all paid, and money wasn't an issue. So, for her rights to keep staying, I don't know. Anyway she accepted moving. Seeing I brought all my money with me into the marriage before we were married, I think juridically things would not be too problematic. 
In any case she earns a lot so I doubt she would push for getting a piece of my assets. A user in the comments said. Everyone sucks here. She's obviously in the wrong for cheating. Sorry to hear that by the way. But you've behaved like an butthole in the way you've handled it. I absolutely do not condone her behavior at all. But it's a real prick move to leave her with no access to any of her belongings for a week or more. You could have left without changing the locks, or you could have stayed and asked her to leave after grabbing the essentials. You didn't need to go out of your way to leave her stranded with no options. Another user said, everyone sucks here. It might be your apartment, but you're married, and she lives there, as far as I know she absolutely has legal right to enter her home. As well, by locking her out and leaving the country, you've opened yourself up to having her also call a locksmith to break open the door. I'm sure she can also prove she lives there. Very bad planning. You would have been better to kick her out and have her remove all her stuff. Then you can change the locks and duck off to Italy, which I fully agree with, by the way. The next one is titled, GF, fiancé of 8 years cheated and replaced me with a jobless dude. I just needed to get this off my chest and some advice from you guys. I already hate 2020 due to the fact that all it took for my girl, 26, of 8 years to cheat on me was a random, happy new year, greeting from an old acquaintance that she barely knew. She even made it seem like I was controlling and wanted to break up with me, but I just found out that there was a third party all along that she formed a relationship with over the course of two weeks starting January. She's already had sex with the guy several times over from the start of the year up to this point but even so, kept going on and off with me during the process which made the past few weeks a living hell for me. To make matters worse, the guy she chose to cheat with is a jobless hippie wannabe whose only redeeming quality is being a musician. My GF basically threw away our 8 years of valuable relationship time, our plans for our own house, already bought land, and a better chance at a stable life and family. TBH, I feel more insulted than sad at her decision. When I asked her reason, she just said the guy talked to her and was interested in what she's saying. Plus, I also found out that the guy also just broke up with his own GF recently. Basically, him and my ex are a rebound affair. For the record I've always been there for her and at times even felt like an emotional tampon. She also never once in our 8 years together talked to me about my problems either, I never felt she cared about what was going on with me. I already accepted that she's an unfair partner. It's just that I've been really frustrated and sleepless lately because of what she did and who she chose to cheat with. Just a couple of days ago, we've formally broken up. I need some words of wisdom or encouragement from you guys. And what to do if my ex suddenly regrets her decisions and tries to make up with me. Goodness knows she's already doing that. She even wants to stay friends with me while she's with another. Should I stay friends? Among many other things that need advice. Thanks for your answers. A user in the comments said. Op. Go no contact. Never speak or have anything to do with this selfish no character lunatic. Do not even think about being friends with her. Do you want this dip crap hippie wannabe lounging on your couch, eating your food, drinking your liquor and ducking your ex? Op, you sound like you have it together, except the end of your post where you are asking if you should remain friends. Op, think of all the beautiful faithful ladies out there who would love to meet an honorable and great guy like you. You have so much going for you. Go to the gym, concentrate on your career, and socialize with friends who can introduce you to great ladies. Your ex will realize she crap in her mess kit. There is no coming back from this. It's a new chapter in your life, she did you a favor, she showed who she really is. Move forward and you will be so much happier. Another user said, the mature thing to do is to peacefully end a long relationship and then pursue another man. She is hoping you stay friends, so she feels better about ducking you over. But, real friends don't screw each over like that, do they? So, no, no friendship with a lying backstabber. Imagine if a stranger ran over your dog and instead of an apology told you how great it is you get to keep the carcass. That's what she is offering you. Ghost her hard. Block her on everything. 
If she manages to get through tell her there are plenty of good in the world. The next one is titled. Cheating X is being cruel. Seems to be ruining my NC and recovery. For a little background, my earliest post on this subreddit contains the whole story. GF, fiancé of 8 years cheated on me after we bought our own land to settle down before we get married. D-Day is roughly one month ago. I initiated NC, no contact, around the start of February. So basically, I'm two weeks in and slowly recovering. Anger is not as intense anymore. I feel like I'm in the sadness, grieving stage now. She was against this as she wanted to be friends, but I still blocked her on everything except Gmail because we amicably agreed. Contract and everything, to split the land finances for the land we bought back when I thought we were romantically stable. I did ask her to email me whenever it's about the land finances and to include full details so that there would be no need to resort to a messaging app. But then, out of the blue, my cheating ex-fiancé emailed me a cryptic hangouts, pretty much implying me to unblock her on the app so we can talk. This was on February 15th, which to me still counts as Valentine's. Me being a sucker replied on email what it was about, since I can't just brush it off as it might be about the land we bought. No reply. So, I bit the bullet and unblocked her on Hangouts and asked what it was about. No reply as well. It has been three full days since then. So, my assumption was, it wasn't really about the land but either she just wanted a Valentine's Plan B date, or she wanted to purposely give me anxiety and reset my recovery process. I even explicitly told her prior that my going to NC was for my recovery and for me to move on. Now the problem, of course, is that her gesture reset me, and I now feel more anxious than ever, and the anger is also back. I just blocked her again in Hangouts and gave her an angry but composed email. It's insane how one small gesture can devastate me so much and how she is abusing the land finances situation to possibly reel me back in as a plan B or just to mess with me. If my guess is right, what she's doing is just plain cruel and evil. Anyone here with exes doing the same to them? How do you keep on track and hop back on the recovery train quickly? I fear this is not the end of it and I am bound to get more crap tea emails from her until after we have completely sold off the land and split the money a process that could take months. She's also the one handling the sale so there's no other person I could contact regarding it. A user in the comments said, Recovery is not a linear process. It's normal to feel completely fine one day and devastated the next. Since D-Day, it feels like I go through 50 different emotions every week. One minute I think I'm completely over him, the next minute I'm crying because I found someone else's panties in my laundry. Do not give her the space to disrespect you again. Do not give her another opportunity to lie to you. Don't give her an opportunity to hurt you even more. You said you were only going to communicate through email. Stick with that. Only talk about important issues and nothing else. She doesn't deserve to check up on you or to know what's going on in your life. Another user said, first of all, you have your processes a little mixed up. The relationship died and with that the grieving process took over with denial, anger, bargaining, depression and finally acceptance being stages. When you violated the no, contact rules you put in place you moved back to the anger phase as you already stated. Now the stages are fluid so you may experience all at once and then again you may find them to be consecutive or you may move back and forth. You made the right choice with the no contact rule, you are already moving on then the message moved you back to the denial and then anger stage. You have to follow your own rules in order to get through it. It does not matter what her motivation was. When we grieve someone that has died, we cannot reverse death same with relationships do not revive them once they have died not a good idea at all. Once you are at the acceptance stage maybe you can resume contact then but not before. You know what needs to happen now follow through with it. If it helps, then write down where you see yourself in the short and long term do not include her in any of those scenarios. The write down the plan to achieve those goals again without her and see through on that. You will see it will help you tremendously in the long run. Now please grieve and follow the rules of the process. The next one is titled, Cheating X Got Her Karma, 
I feel kind of sad though. Hello everyone, let me just say beforehand that I owe this community big time. You guys were the only ones there for me back in January 2020 during my breakup. That was the worst month of my life after my cheating ex left me for someone else. I love this community. Check my post history if you want the full story. I was a dumpster fire several months back and even contemplated suicide back then. Anyway, I left this sub when I started moving on and healing back in May, if I recall. Now I'm back for some advice and perspective. For context, my cheating ex still owes me $4,000, big deal in my country. So I asked her just this September for a follow-up on paying that debt since we had a signed contract that she should pay before 2020 ends. She asked if we could talk via hangouts, so I agreed. We talked last night. Turns out she wanted to ask for a payment date extension until next year. More than that, she gave me an update on her life situation. She lost her two high-paying freelance jobs due to COVID and is now working a barely above minimum wage 9-to-5 office job amidst a raging outbreak in my country. She also lost her condominium unit, it got, repossessed, since she couldn't pay mortgage and is now forced to live with her aunt. She lost everything she down paid on that apartment, thousands of dollars worth. On top of that, the guy she left me for was a broke musician. I think they broke up last month after some friends stalked her page and gave me that unverified speculation. Instead of feeling elated and fortunate, I ended up pitying her. It was the first time I heard her say, please, after she cheated on me and left. I ended up asking her whether she was depressed to which she answered that she was, and that she was nearly at that certain point in depression. No goals, no more dreams, just living month to month hopping dead end call center jobs. I was shocked. This wasn't the smart proud girl I once loved, not anymore. I didn't want to pry deeper. My whole reaction was that of a parent scolding their irresponsible child. Asked her what the hell happened to her and why she let it happen. I even felt a bit insulted at her job choice since I pretty much indoctrinated her into high-paying freelance jobs and never settling for less than she deserves in a job market back in our heyday. I've never heard such a defeated tone from her. I even tried cheering her up. She pretty much lost everything, all that's left are her jobless relatives trying to leech off her measly income. Breadwinner culture in this country is insane. Now here I am losing sleep at what I thought would give me a peace of mind. Several months ago, and before COVID, I would have laughed at her for having that kind of karma. Now I'm just deeply concerned. I even considered giving her some of my work to help her. I was also dead set on giving her that extension until I suddenly remembered her capacity for lying and all the pain, she inflicted on me. So, I hesitated and just told her that I needed to think about that extension. Trauma and trust issues are still there, I guess. I am considering the extension, and it would seem like I have no choice since she won't be able to pay on time anyway. I definitely don't want to take it to court, that's like kicking an injured person. I don't want to drive her to be suicidal because I know how that crap felt when she did it to me and I fear that she might not be able to handle it. Did I do the right thing in telling her I'll think about it? Or was I too harsh and callous? This was not what I expected at all when I hoped she would get karmic justice served to her. I guess I still care for her despite everything she did, or at least I cared for what she once was. What do I now? Thanks for hearing me out. This is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the relationship stories. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video and write a comment. I really appreciate your support and it helps my channel so much. Thank you.